Hi there, Happy New Year everyone and uh, welcome to today's demo. This is going to be about Azure Data Factory and using DevOps techniques. Uh, this is sometimes referred to as Data Ops. Um, so we're not going to go into DevOps itself today. That will be in an upcoming video just to, uh, to make sure the data community is aware of how to uh, deal with DevOps, why we're doing DevOps, that kind of thing, but we won't cover that today. Uh, the demo we've got today also is going to include a pipeline in uh, Data Factory. Please don't take any notice of that pipeline. The way that Data Factory works, we have to have something there for it to validate in order to publish. So I'm going to create just the simplest pipeline that you can imagine. It's just going to connect to a storage account and there will be a copy job um, with some made up data sets there. So uh, please don't take too much notice of that. We're just doing it quickly to, to get it done. If you want to cover any other Data Factory stuff, uh, ask in the comments below for a demo or go and look at the other demos that, uh, that have already been done. So uh, Data Factory is a little bit different for DevOps than a, a lot of other project products. Um, the way that it works is that Data Factory itself is going to do a build and create the deployment artifacts Normally, uh, that would be done as part of the pipeline. In this instance, it just doesn't work like that. Data Factory, you have to push the Publish button. Uh, that will then create the artifacts, which will then get saved back into the repository. So the, um, the DevOps uh, solution that we're using, Azure DevOps, is going to then copy those in as an artifact so that we've got that permanent record that we need uh, and repeatability, all that good stuff. Uh, and then we're going to deploy that into another environment. With Data Factory, you've got the option of either you'll have a test QA, a prod environment, and you deploy to those, those are your permanent ones, or you have the option that you can deploy a new Data Factory each time and uh, roll new things into new Data Factories. Uh, this is something that you're just going to have to decide for yourself which suits your environment better uh, and how, that, how that's going to integrate with um, the other components in your environment. So you're also going to have to decide do we want to put things like Spark scripts into the, uh, the same deployment pipeline or do we want to have a separate deployment pipeline to do each product separately or do we want a mix, that kind of thing. The first thing we're going to do is set up a project in Azure DevOps. So just log into your portal and click new project. Um, and here we're going to uh, just give the pro project a name, uh, ADF DevOps and the current date. In this instance, it's uh, 2nd of January. We're going to mark it as private just because it's a demo, but obviously use whatever you would normally use within your organization uh, that meets with your standards. Next thing we're going to do is set up the repository uh, for the code. So just click on repository or repos and hit that initialize button at the bottom with a readme. That will then just set up the, the repository ready so that we can actually use it. Uh, we can optionally do this within um, Data Factory, but in this instance, I've chosen to do it here just to show you how it's done. Next thing we're going to do is go into the uh, Azure portal and we're going to set up a couple of Data Factories. You may notice that uh, the video here is, is very, very speeded up. Uh, I didn't really see any value in, in talking you slowly through how to click here and how to make a Data Factory and that kind of thing. Um, those are, that's in other videos. If you're struggling with it, please hit me up in the comments and I'm happy to make more videos. Here we're going to make two. One's called Dev ADF uh, with the current date. The second one is going to be called Depl uh, and the current date. Uh, this is for deploy. Uh, that is a, a kind of stand-in for the um, test QA production environments that you would be using normally in, in, um, in your environment. Um, the dev one is where we're going to do the actual development work and where we're going to work on feature branches. Finally, we're going to create a storage account uh, purely as a placeholder. This, this isn't going to really do anything. This is just so that we can create a valid pipeline. We're not going to use any data or anything. It's a real basic pipeline uh, just to get validation so that we can save something and publish it. Uh, so as I said earlier, please ignore that. Once that's created, uh, there's a couple of containers going to go in there, sync and source. Those are just purely for the purposes of um, of creating the pipeline. Next, we're going to uh, load up into the dev version of our data factory um, just by hitting the um, author and monitor uh, button in there. Uh, I sped up this because the uh, interface took a, a little minute to load. 
So once you're in here, click on the edit button, which is the little pencil on the side. Once you're in your data factory designer interface, uh, click where it says data factory at the top uh, and drop down and the, then hit set up code repository. In here, we're going to choose Azure DevOps Git. Um, and then we're going to choose the, uh, the DevOps account and uh, choose the project name that we've already uh, just created in Azure DevOps. Then we're going to use an existing Git repository, choose the one that we've created. We're going to choose not to import the existing data there, and we're just going to use the master branch as collaboration branch. This is going to be where all of the changes are saved in uh, Data Factory that we're then going to publish uh, out into to create the artifacts. So uh, once we've done that, Data Factory should then automatically ask you uh, what you want your um, feature branch to be called. Uh, so it comes up and asks about working branch. Hit create new, and we're just going to give that a, a name, a feature branch, and, and today's current date. This is where we're going to actually work on new features, new pipelines, new data sets, that kind of stuff before we publish them. Um, so just like in standard code writing, uh, that's how it's going to work. So next we're going to set up the pipeline. Uh, again, I've sped this up because we've covered it elsewhere. Uh, go back and watch other videos if you want to see this. So here we're just going to create a connection to the blob storage, select that blob store that we created earlier, validate um, and save that. Then we're going to create two data sets on here, both pointing to that same blob storage. One of them is going to point to the source, one of them is going to point to the sync. Um, and we'll give them those, uh, those names of source and sync. We're just going to choose delimited text, uh, don't import the schema, um, and choose the, the container for the source and the sync there. And then we're just going to create a, a standard pipeline and put a copy job on there. And that copy job is just going to copy from source to sync. We're never going to run this, so don't worry about the details, as I've said all through the video. Uh, this is purely so that we've got something to publish. Uh, here we're just, we're just showing the... Um, the contents of those repositories, and that's going to have the source JSON in there, um, but it's not going to be into the, the master branch yet. Uh, the next step, we're going to create a pull request uh, just by dropping down that feature branch drop down um, and hitting the uh, pull request. Give it a title. This takes you into Azure DevOps to do that pull request. If you're using GitHub, it will pull you into GitHub instead. Um, create this and just for the purpose of this demo I'm not going to go into what a pull request is or any of that kind of stuff uh, and this is not best practice I'm just going to hit approve I'm going to hit complete uh, the, the purpose of this is to show you a merge in action so we're going to take that code from the feature branch merge it into master uh, and then data factory is going to remove the uh, the, the feature branch that we're working on so we have to create a new one if we want to keep working on new stuff uh, but from this point, master is the branch by default that Data Factory is going to be using. So here we're actually going to create a new uh, feature branch and assume that someone is going to keep working on it. Um, we may actually be doing that through Azure DevOps, but uh, now we can see the new feature branch is just going to be a, a clone of the master. If we go into master, we'll see all of that JSON code that's um, that's been moved into there. Uh, exactly as it was in the in the previous feature branch and then uh, data factory is going to have created adf underscore publish as another branch this is what it actually uses to create the uh, artifacts so here we can see it's created a basic arm template uh, but not much else um, this is what we're going to do now is we're going to hit that publish button um, from the drop down and uh, when we hit that, what's going to happen is Data Factory is going to do a standard publish. So this development uh, version of Data Factory is actually going to publish it so that we could run uh, and do some initial testing. It's going to tell us what's changed. So we've added a pipeline, added sync data, added source data. So we're going to hit OK to that. And it's going to go off, publish that, and then it's going to create some ARM templates for us. And it's these ARM templates that we're going to actually use to do the deployment. Uh, once we go back into uh, Azure DevOps. So you'll see the pop-ups starting to come up on the screen. Uh, once you've got the uh, created ARM templates um, pop up OK, then you're good to move on.
So we're just going to take a quick look at the code that was generated there for the ARM templates. Uh, so click over onto your um, Azure DevOps, click on the branches and go into that ADF underscore publish. And in here you're now going to find all of the artifacts that were created. So there's partial ARM templates that create uh, contain some of the um, things that we've created. There's the ARM template for, for factory, which creates the uh, data factory. And there's a parameters file there, which includes this factory name, so we can change that in the pipeline. Obviously, we can then edit these and put in other, um, other parameterization as and where we need it. So we could change uh, various other things about the environment through, uh, through variables. So next, we're going to create the build. Uh, we're going to use the classic editor for this because it's simpler. It also works better on video than me just typing in a bunch of code. Uh, and it's not, we're not doing something complicated here. We're literally just going to copy some files. So change your default branch for manual and scheduled builds to ADF underscore publish, choosing obviously the Azure DevOps uh, repo. Uh, this is going to create you a blank, um, blank build process. So we're going to change the name there um, just so that we can recognize it in your production environment. You're going to have multiple of these doing various different things. So ADF build pipeline so that we recognize what's happening. Going to go into that trigger and enable continuous integration. This means that every single time we do a publish in Data Factory, that's going to kick off a build process here. The build process here is then going to copy those new artifacts so that we can then trigger, uh, line up some, some releases into production. So in the agent job, we're going to click add and we're just going to put in a um, publish build artifacts job in there. And what this does is it just takes um, whatever you've created within your build process and it drops it into um, into permanent storage within Azure DevOps. And then we're going to choose the folder. And obviously that folder is the root of the, um, the repository. And then we're going to hit save and queue. What this will do is it will run the first build for us now, uh, just so that we've got an artifact to work with. Um, you know, this is handy because uh, when you initially did that publish, this wasn't set up. So, so this is just going to run it for that first time. Next time the queuing will be done automatically. So when you hit run, uh, you'll see that it waits for an agent. So uh, behind the scenes, there's a bunch of agents sitting and waiting. You can use your own agents for this. Um, that's a topic for another day. Uh, there's probably lots of videos about that out there already. Um, and then we'll just get one of these agents uh, and we can see the output on the screen here. So uh, it sits there and it'll just chug through um, the techie stuff, publishing the ARM templates. We can see that's all successful. Uh, and then we hit the artifact button at the top, we can actually see the artifact that was created, which is just a kind of folder with all the stuff in. It looks just like our repo. The difference being this can no longer be edited by um, by the people that were, were writing that code and, and editing it. Um, so this is permanently going to be deployable by us in our environment. So uh, immutable is, is probably the word we'd use there. Uh, and it means that we can roll backwards and forwards as we as we see fit. So if we in the future decided that something had gone horribly wrong on when we did this, uh, the next build, we can roll back to this build and we can just redeploy it to any environment. So now we're going to create a release pipeline. Uh, we're going to call this test environment here. Normally you'd have test, you'd have QA, pre-prod, prod, whatever you call it in your environment, in your business. Uh, hit the add artifact button. We're going to choose a source of build and then we're just going to drop these boxes down and find that um, that pipeline that we set up. And that automatically goes and finds the, the artifact we just created. So it takes a lot of the work out of finding uh, finding the code and stuff. So we hit that little lightning button and enable continuous deployment. What this means is as soon as a build becomes available, an artifact has been created, we're going to go into this staging. And each of these stages would normally have um, gates on them, so people would have to approve them uh, before we can move through them. Normally you'd have it set up so that you couldn't get into production without having gone through test first. So in here, we're just going to add a task for uh, Azure Resource Group deployment. Uh, this is exactly the same as if you were just deploying an ARM template normally. 
um, fully automated. So we're just going to choose our subscription and that's going to go off and authorize when we click the button. It takes a couple of seconds to authorize uh, and then it's just a case of choosing where we want to deploy. So next we're going to choose the, uh, the resource group. Uh, this will obviously be the resource group that we set up the data factories in earlier. Just using that drop down list there. Uh, then we're going to choose the location. Obviously, again, this has to be the location that we set up the data factory. Uh, and then for the template, we're going to click browse and we're going to actually browse into that artifact. So go through to the ARM templates and choose ARM template for factory.json. Then for the template parameters, we're going to hit the browse button again and just browse to the template parameters file in the same folder. So that will be ARM template parameters for factory. Then we're going to override the, the uh, name of the factory. So we're going to use depl ADF and the current date instead of dev ADF. So obviously by default, it chooses the, the development environment. We just need to change that to the correct one. We can use parameters within uh, or variables within uh, Azure DevOps um, to set this automatically. So you wouldn't have to manually edit these for your uh, different environments you would just set up a variable for that environment and, and call it prod environment or whatever you want to call it. So once that's done, uh, we're going to save that. And that's our release pipeline done. So hit create release. And uh, we're going to set the staging uh, to the test environment and click create to uh, schedule a release of this build. So normally we'd set all this up to be automated. As soon as a build comes in, it's going to deploy to the test environment. Once we approve the test environment, it's going to deploy to pre-prod. And once we approve that, it's going to go and roll it out to, to production. Uh, so here we're just going to, uh, to hover over and then hit the deploy button to trigger it manually, because obviously this is just a demo. So I've not set up all the complexities of, um, of the deployment. So just as before, uh, this is now going to go off and find us a um, build environment uh, from the pool of build environments that's available in Azure DevOps, or it's going to, uh, in your real environment, you, you could be using a, a server. So that's now going to sit there and do the tasks. What this effectively is doing is just submitting that ARM template up to the Azure Resource Manager. That is then going to deploy it into your environment, and it's going to push these settings over the top of your um, your deploy environment in Data Factory. Once that deployment's complete, uh, you'll see the success on there. Then we're going to go back into the Azure portal and just open that interface for the um, deployment uh, Data Factory and just check that everything is deployed OK. And then within that interface, we can see we've got our two data sets, the sync data, the source data. We've got pipeline one and it's set up properly. Um, and effectively, we can replicate this with multiple environments, uh, but that is the end of the demo. Hopefully you found that useful. Uh, put something in the comments below, letting me know what you think. Please subscribe to the channel down below. Um, it really helps us to get subscribers. It also helps you to, uh, to get access to the videos to, to make sure that you see them. When you subscribe, all that happens is uh, when new videos come up, they will end up on your, uh, your homepage on YouTube. So please do that. Also check out the GitHub repository at aka.ms forward slash Dave does demos uh, for some of the ones that have not made it to YouTube yet. Uh, thanks very much. We'll see you next time.